Those lights. Mm-hmm. This is what episode 772, and I still cannot get used to those. Anyways, welcome to the WK Burnout Studio. I'm Christina, and I'm Dustin. Alan, behind the scenes, blinding us blinding with us. his brightness. Brightness. Mm-hmm. So today, yes, let's get. What are we talking about? We're going to talk about the worst of the worst. Yes, which is a hot topic right now of Very. the. Top 10, either worst or most unreliable, whether you can word it either way, yeah. vehicles. It, it was the end of the year. They always do these yeah. lists at the end of the year. What were the 2023's best and 2023's worst? worst. Mm-hmm. And uh, worst is trending right now. Oh, yeah. It, it's, it's been it's been all over. So mm-hmm. we thought we would look at uh, a couple of different outlets where they're reviewing this information. A few Mm -hmm. of the videos we saw were the Consumer Reports 10 Worst List. Yes. The J.D. Power 10 Worst List as kind of a, uh, because we thought, okay, like, is there just a guy at each of these places that is like, that one sucks. Right. Put it on the list. And then this one, you know, Mm -hmm. how do they do this? How do they get this information? So we researched it for you, right? Yes. And there was a lot of lists just saying. Yeah, tons. Of, you could you could really get lost in it and also mm-hmm. extremely confused because it's like, how do they are they is or do they break down mechanically like roadside assistance more than other stuff or right. what it, what what's the issue? Right. So we did a little bit of research to figure out what the issues are. Yes. Um, Christina, do you want to start with the consumer reports information? Yes. So um, on my way to work, I was listening to a few different podcasts just because that's what we do. And uh, Consumer Reports popped up. And I think Consumer Reports, reliable, you know, source. So I thought, I'll listen listen to this one. Um, They were talking about their top 10 most unreliable vehicles, but how they came across them, how they made this list. It wasn't just a they look at the manufacturers and say, I don't, we don't like that one. We don't like that one. We don't like that, you know, right. type thing. Um, how it is done is they actually have a fleet of vehicles that they track test. So um, I think right now they have almost 300 um, vehicles that they track test. So they put so many miles on, but it's their company, Consumer Report, the company Consumer Reports have those vehicles and they actually drive them. They put them through, they check their nuisance, you know, level. And I'm like, what? It? So noises, noise, sound, brakes, squeaks, you know, your, your inside, your, to hear you, your cab, you know, is it a noisy, so forth. Um, safety and customer satisfaction based off of all of those. They also send out surveys to consumer reports members, like subscribers. subscribers yeah. Yes. So, I am not a member or subscriber of Consumer Reports, so I would not get that survey. Right. Um, so my opinion doesn't count. So this list that we have of the of the top 10 most unreliable vehicles, it would be similar to if WK family mm-hmm. sent out a survey to all of their customers and then we road tested, you know, all the vehicles that came in. So you have to take that with a kind of a grain of salt. So if your vehicle is on this list or a vehicle that you are interested in is on this list don't think oh well that's a piece of junk i can't buy that or oh i got to get out of this vehicle it's it's a piece of junk because i will tell you number six (laughs) i love this vehicle and i was a little disappointed to see it on the list because when you first type in you know top 10 worst vehicles consumer reports and the list pops up and i have no i i just see the list I don't know how it's generated or what happens. I thought, how disappointing. But when you start digging and you find out that it's, they do track test and they ask their. Yeah, their, their members. Their members. There we go. You know, not being a consumer reports subscriber myself either. Mm -hmm. um, You can kind of pick apart the the demographic a little bit. The Mm -hmm. person that subscribes to consumer reports is probably. Um, 
maybe squ- kind of a squeaky wheel <laughs> is your example. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No. It, you, you know, it's it's <clears throat> it's hard to tell on that. Yes. Um, so, but let's 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 read off the top ten. And sorry, Alan, I'm gonna have to look at my screen that's over here. I have Dustin's in front of me, and we got them backwards here. this time. Yeah, but um, so our your top ten consumer yes. reports most unreliable vehicles. Right. Okay. Number ten, Jeep Wrangler. Does that surprise you? Okay. <laughs> My opinion on part of this list, uh, Mm -hmm. or actually the vast majority of it is, you know, it doesn't specify so much um, that it couldn't be that just maybe some certain new models that were introduced with new features, Mm -hmm. like the plug-in hybrid model, Mm -hmm. uh, could have been a factor that led to that Wrangler landing on the sure on the list on the top on number number 10 and and that could just be because you know it, when you attach hybrid to any model mm-hmm. y- the type of consumer that is shopping and buying that particular vehicle may mm-hmm. be a little more critical sure uh and their expectations may be a little bit higher yeah um well so that and that there's nothing wrong with that it's your it's your money mm-hmm. but that just kind of goes in the direction of okay I'm I'm seeing a trend here keep keep going and we'll we'll see more of the trend <laughs> and see and that a Jeep Wrangler what comes to mind is for me is oh man absolutely I see that on the list because if you get in one and drive on the highway nuisance complete nuisance well noise sound vibration <laughs> right there, there's yes. there's always going to be something yeah. it's got like a thin plastic roof on it it's right. super cool it's yeah. cool people know what they're getting but if they get one and don't know what they're getting, they're going to complain about it. Exactly. It's get on the list. Yeah. yeah. So that's, again, just like you said, you're, you know, you're looking, you have to, you have to remember the consumer behind this, yeah. you know. Um, number nine, Jeep Grand Cherokee. I don't agree. I don't, I, I wouldn't put that one on there. You know, that's, that's a, that one might, is a little hard to, mm-hmm. hard to dissect. I mm-hmm. mean. Steve loves his Grand Cherokee. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just I'm, saying, yeah. and it's a it's a brand new one. So yeah. there's, it's a sample audience. It's a sample yep. vehicle. It's yep. it's you know conditions vary and everything, mm-hmm. but uh, but and it is a you know it was a, a new model year too, right? And that usually has a big effect sure. on uh, noise, sound, vibration, stuff mm-hmm. like that, mm-hmm. possible nuisances, uh, recalls, things of that nature. I mean, a brand new model. Sometimes falls into that pretty easy. Yep. Number eight, VW Jetta. The Jetta. That's like the bread and that's like a bread and butter car. Yeah. I mean, they're, that's their, their, you get it, you drive it, you do it's like a Civic or an Accord or something, right? Sure. It's a Jetta. It's, it's, uh, mm-hmm. it's a very effective tool mm-hmm. usually, but they've, mm-hmm. they found a reason to place it, uh, on the unreliable list. And, mm-hmm. you know, as we, dive a little bit more into it there, there may be some signs pointing to uh that it maybe does belong on this on this list based on the uh other models, models. from the same manufacturer and the stating mm-hmm. of the manufacturer on other lists sure so uh number seven nissan frontier we don't see many of those no and you know why <clears throat> i have like a excuse for every one of them but i think about it i'm like okay why that's is why we're having this conversation that, right? <laughs> Maybe it's because it lags in the 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 mid sized truck segment. Mm-hmm. That's a super duper competitive segment. Yeah, like people will come in and buy one and then trade like six months later because it wouldn't crawl a rock hill and drop the kids off at school as well sure. as the other one. Just saying. I mean, yeah. it's a super competitive, popular segment right mm-hmm. now with people that want a really specific thing. Mm-hmm. And you know, it could be that it, especially in the North American market, the Frontier just is is a uh, not quite at the level of some stuff like the Colorado Canyon. Oh, yeah. Roma, yeah. Which, Ranger even. So. Yeah. Which Colorado. Love them. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, number six. This breaks my heart. I know. It does. The Greek. The Greek. The Greek. The, Greek, the, Greek the Cher- Jeep Real. Grand Cherokee L. But I don't know. You're, you're probably still going to buy that one. So <laughs> I, <laughs> it doesn't. L does the not L's mean loser. loser. <laughs> Alan. No, I, it, it's hard to, cause if you think about it, the, mm-hmm. the same vehicle that's not anywhere near this list is, mm-hmm. is on the same platform. Um, wouldn't that be the Durango? Oh yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe, I mean, maybe stuff's different enough, but as we keep going, we're going to bring up the, the thing that could be the, the, the root of, of a lot of it mm-hmm. as we go, as we go. Well, just saying, just because the vehicle that you're interested in or that you own is on this vehicle, is on this list. We're not again. here to bash you. Yes. Yeah. Because we, we'll, we'll buy most of the stuff on this list ourselves yes. personally, because, you know, we know better. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going by the looks of the Jeep Grand. I've drove it down here. Anyways, uh, um, number five, the Rivian R1T. Mm-hmm. I just, um, it just looks weird. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it. But the it, looks aren't, doesn't deem it unreliable. However. No. But they've they've had their fair share of issues. But also the Rivian as a manufacturer, that is like, I mean, everybody that gets a Rivian almost is mm-hmm. what you would call an early adopter. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, those are also the people that had expectations for range. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, uh, and the harsh reality of North American weather mm-hmm. and terrain and everything that has massive effects on the range of these vehicles. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's a, a big reason a lot of the the electric uh, manufacturers as a whole are on these lists. Yeah. Well, of course, because you, when you put range out there, you put in perfect driving conditions, just like miles per gallon. You yeah. know, but only we know not to when it says thirty six. We mm-hmm. know that. But dude, if you subscribe to Consumer Reports and you got a new Rivian, mm-hmm. and you get a thing in the mail from Consumer Reports asking you. To provide feedback on your Rivian. Mm -hmm. Let's say, you know, lots of people with a good experience would probably put that, oh, I'll fill this thing out and tell them how good they did later. The person that whose Rivian is currently in the shop for Mm -hmm. battery replay or whatever the case may be, they're Mm going to be like, here we go. They're going to write a novel and send it back to consumer reports. And that's 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 a great thing about the system is is feedback and some some monochrome of transparency. But uh, that would probably be a, a pretty fair yeah. guess as to why. Um, but it's you know, number five. Yeah. Well, number four is the Volvo XC60. Mm-hmm. Which I really like. The, the I like Volvos and I like the XC60 a lot. It's but I also <laughs> feel like Volvo as a manufacturer uh, that's a pretty discerning clientele. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got really, really high expectations, yes, especially if they're uh, uh, a repeat buy. Like if they're just Volvo people, mm-hmm. oh my gosh! Mm-hmm. And it's uh, it's hard to hard to tell. Really, uh, you know, powertrain wise, you don't. I mean, they, Volvo does a really nice job with their engines usually. So yeah, uh, uh, number three, the the Ord. Why can I not speak today? <laughs> Ford F-150 hybrid. Hybrid. Yeah. Yes. So I don't hybrid. know. If hybrid's in the name, there's, a, again, uh, an extra degree of uh, just kind of, you know, scrutiny uh, by the the owner of the product. There probably could potentially have been coming from a completely different kind of vehicle. Sure. Getting a hybrid truck. Could have mm-hmm. been their first foray into mm-hmm. truck having, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Uh, that's that's a a guess okay. as as to why it's on there. We, you know, we don't have a, a at our Ford store mm-hmm. a bunch of them sitting out back, like you know, buyer or anything like that. Sure. So, um, yeah, you know, I don't uh, know. Uh, number two, Volkswagen. Taos? Taos. 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 Like Taos, New Met, like Taos. I had not West. ever heard or seen this type of vehicle, this vehicle. So I had to, to look it up. And based on the looks of it, doesn't mean it's unreliable, obviously. However, that's sure. as far as I know. You know, yeah. I've, I yeah. know of that vehicle. Well, it's on there and it's the second Volkswagen on the list. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and with, with that on there, okay, it's got a weird name. With the Jetta on there, it's like, man, the Jetta's like, I mean, they, they, they should strive for perfection. That's sure. a, a bread and butter mm-hmm. mass moving mm-hmm. model. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's somebody fell asleep at the Volkswagen factory or something. So stuff hasn't <laughs> been as good. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, but we are going to get to before we do number one. Yes. A lot 
of issues Mm -hmm. and complaints with vehicles that are on these lists Mm -hmm. are related to the infotainment systems. Yes. That I think requires a a bit of explanation um, so that it makes sense. Over the past several years, it, you know, with Bluetooth moving to uh, CarPlay and Android Auto Mm -hmm. and different manufacturers doing that at different paces and in different ways, um, we've had just enough time as, uh, as consumers, the mass market of us, I mean, people that aren't early technology adopters, Mm -hmm. you know, people that are just, they, they get what the car has. Okay. It has this, I use this now. Right. Right. We're just now getting used to a lot of this stuff Mm -hmm. and then it changes. Yes. And in a lot of cases, drastically, Mm -hmm. there are a lot of uh, instances of features that were functional uh, in, you know, back in 2012, 2013, you could read your text messages on your infotainment screen. You can't do that anymore. Guess what? That that's a, that's an issue for yeah. the customer who really liked that and yeah. got used to it. doesn't mean that it's safe or that it's not good that it went away, mm-hmm. but for them, it's like, Hey, this is my complaint. I used yeah. to be able to do this. Now I can't do anything remotely like that. Correct. That can be frustrating. Yes. And you know, you, you've got so many different uh, hands in the cookie jar with this infotainment stuff. You know, we've got Apple, we've got Google, mm-hmm. we've got Google again, because mm-hmm. we have Google based radios now. Uh, just so wait much. for, just wait for the, the, the fallout from that among other big changes with subscription related uh, services in the right. cars. Um, the, the stuff kind of piles up. And, uh, and gives a lot of opportunity for dissatisfaction, which is where these, yeah, that does not strand you. Yes. Okay. It doesn't I, leave you on the side of the road. We, we don't want to yeah. give the impression that any of this stuff is going to strand you on the side of the road mm-hmm. because it's on this list. Mm-hmm. People had issues, What their issues were with varies. Right. Um, but you, you always have to keep in mind with issues with new cars a lot of stuff is mm-hmm. going to be infotainment system related. Yes. Just think of immediately comes to mind is when we, you know, change in our customer relation management software within mm. the dealership, Tom Carter, <laughs> love it's him, so mad. but oh my God, it was <laughs> like, oh, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. So if he filled out one of these surveys, that's what I, that's what yeah, I see. Okay. True. And it's it, all true. it takes is, you know, once you get it's used change. to someone, yeah, yes. and change is really hard for some people. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it it is a little frustrating. Sure. Especially it, it when is. you're used to just hopping in and going, you know, and pushing when you a get in your car. I mean, I get in, I have a process mm-hmm. and that is, you know, put, <clears throat> put my phone here, sit it there, do this. Mm-hmm. Oh, they move the wireless phone charger. Ah, oh, mm-hmm. come on. Why is it over here now? What yeah. The, ah, yeah. <laughs> I don't put it there. That's not where I put it. Yeah. Well, they yeah. bought a new car. They, yeah. We didn't like take your old car and move it on you. Hey, <laughs> gotcha. right. And you know, you, you bought a new one. It's moved in a different place. Yeah. We're not the engineers. I don't know why they did it. Sure. But, um, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff that falls into that, that category of yes. the, the, I just don't like change. Um, and, and it, it's legit. It can be really frustrating enough to make you get that survey out mm-hmm. consumer reports and add a few pages to it. Mm-hmm. I pair my phone, my wife's phone's paired first. It's supposed to come up first. It doesn't. <laughs> this one comes up first. Hey, I yeah. get it. That was your flow. That yeah. worked really well for you for yeah. a year or two, Yeah, you know, and then you got to get the new model. You got the new model stuff changed. Yep. And, and it, soon that, you'll be used to it. However, you will. Yeah. 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 For, for good or for good or bad. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you just have to get used to not having a thing you had before because you know, it's the, not available. The, yeah, it's just it's just not a thing that they do anymore. Why? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Insurance. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so with all of that, um, leads into our number consumer reports, number one, most unreliable vehicle. Yeah. Chrysler Pacifica hybrid. Um, I don't Everyone that we have out there, everybody really likes. I don't, I don't really, I don't, I, I don't really have a man, my, opinion my, on that. My guess would be, uh, a, a, that would, I mean, it has a huge screen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so 
Maybe maybe there's some infotainment related woes there. Um, and they're, 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 they're so comfortable. They are. They're great. Like, it's like know. a spaceship. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the coolest minivan. I, yeah. you know, it, it's, know. it's on there, but, uh, oh, I like them. Yeah. <laughs> so now. Oh yeah. JD power, JD power. So we did the consumer reports. So now JD yeah. power and JD power is pretty cut and dry. Uh, they survey the owners. Yes. of products mm-hmm. and ask them about different parts of their experience. So they don't, they don't get their information from the manufacturers. They reach out to owners, verified mm-hmm. owners themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and ask for the information that way. And, and uh, a good example is they'll, they'll pull a certain number of owners and until they receive a certain number of responses okay. and then they'll grade things based on that. Mm-hmm. And other information like uh, um, resale value, crash okay. test data, because JD Power is mm-hmm. also you know book guides for, sure. for trade in value and stuff like that. So yes. they, they take a few things and make an overall score. Okay, and they score their manufacturers as follows. Mm-hmm. Number ten, this is on the worst list. We're doing 2023's worst, worst list, and okay. this is just by manufacturer, not by individual model. Okay, number mm-hmm. ten, Land Rover. Crazy to oh, me. It's been at home on the, the worst reliability <laughs> list since, you know, 1953. But they look so Yeah, they're super, good. super cool. Yes. But they just have a yeah. few, few little quirks, I guess. Um, <laughs> Land Rover's always on. Mm-hmm. Acura. I don't. I. That's not supposed to be there. Back in the day, I loved the oh, Acura. Yeah, I had a couple of Acuras. Acura's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, you know, they're, they're on there, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, Number eight, Lincoln. That's odd to me. I don't know. I mean, yes and no. I mm-hmm. would. I still would probably put a bit on infotainment. Yeah. I kind of thought Ford was Amazing. over their infotainment woes. Mm-hmm. Um, they still have way too many buttons on the steering wheel. Two separate screen thing. It's still weird. But yeah, uh, and that that could have a a bit to do with it. But mm-hmm. um, number seven on the list. Infinity. I don't know. I haven't seen an infinity around for a little while, I guess. I mean. Yeah, we've had one on a lot for a long time. Oh. <laughs> it's, uh, you know. Way to know my inventory and just throw me under the bus, Dustin. <laughs> Thank you. That. Well, <laughs> uh, number six on the list, Audi. That blows my mind because, like. I could name five people off the top of my head that are like, oh, I want an Audi. I want an Audi. I have, you know, an Audi. So. Yeah, it's a, a it's kind of a perception thing. Mm-hmm. Even like 20 year old Audis people are, it's kind of like a 20 year old Mercedes. Like, dang, must be nice. It's like, no, dude, it was right. like four grand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, next on the list, Volkswagen. Hmm. Notice a little parallel between Volkswagen and, and uh, the consumer reports list. Yes. Okay. Yep. Next Chrysler. Mm, kind of notice parallel between those two lists there. Yep. Next on the list, Volvo. Number you, three, Volvo. Yeah, that's number three. And you can see a parallel between mm-hmm. the Volvo on the list there. I don't know. And then number two, Tesla. Yeah. I mean, that's that's got to be a really <laughs> tough market of really, really critical yes. owners. Yes. Uh, because number one on the list for JD Power is Polestar, which I is a, even a, it's electric. It's you know Polestar, Rivian, Tesla. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that. It's growing pains. It's a brand new mm-hmm. market. It's a lot of of fresh technology that they're updating and catching up on as they go. So mm-hmm. you know, I can I can kind of see that. I being there, but I could see that also changing over over time i would hope they still don't like tesla and polestar the, they have a little asterisk by them because they don't necessarily allow any outside sources to yeah, they know don't. certain information there's some caveat there as yeah. to they're on there but not officially ranked because they don't allow a page of fine print i yes. didn't read it it's very fine they don't allow <laughs> <clears throat> third party or whatever to their you know consumer data so forth or whatever like so. but I guess 
the one on the uh, the ones on the JD Power list of the most unreliable or the worst vehicles um, for 2023. Just I know you said Land Rover's always on there, but I don't know. I just Land Rover and Audi are the two that were the most surprising to me. Yeah, and and I, <clears throat> also if you look at Infinity and Acura, I mean those are the premium versions of you know, Honda and Nissan. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, you could also just have a, a little extra, little extra, dis, little higher expectations, little extra discerning uh, individual mm-hmm. um, because their non-premium sister cars have been coming up in, sure. in, you know, equipment and stuff like that. So they touch pretty close to, so they've, they've had to take, you know, a lot of their models and, and make them even more premium, sure. which could be shutting out loyalist customers who have always gone back to an Acura for a slightly better than the Honda mm-hmm. version. And now it's like, it's so different. It's got a completely different powertrain because it's your, or whatever the case may be. Right. So the price points, so forth. Yeah. That. Yeah. And, and again, <clears throat> the, the JD power list, it's, you know, sample audience surveys. Mm-hmm. An example would be they get a hundred surveys back, uh, on, uh, Tesla owners, right? Yes. And they count the number of issues that each one gives back. Lists. Uh Uh-huh. They're in the two hundreds, right? Two something Mm -hmm. issues. Per 100 vehicles. Per 100 vehicles. So. That's Those issues could all be with their phones. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Just saying, I'm not a hundred percent sure. They could be with their phones. They could be with warranty repair time. 2023 was still, mm-hmm. I mean, we're post pandemic parts shortages still. They're trying to build cars mm-hmm. and service the ones, you know, a lot of manufacturers are just now getting caught up on getting the parts for warranty claims. And there's nothing more frustrating as a consumer. I guess your phone not pairing correctly is the number one. Number two would be your car being broke in the shop and not having parts for it. So like oh, you know, yeah. you've got a, a a nice vehicle, a, a you know, Grand Cherokee L and it's in the shop for a few days and you're driving like a ninety nine caravan loaner <laughs> for a while. It's like or a Chrysler oh. Pacifica. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I would love that. Anyway. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it's it's like I guess I'll I'll wait and, and as soon as I get that letter yeah. from JD Power, I'll be like, here we go. <laughs> well, Alan has given us the look. That we are running out of time. Yeah. So, guys, again, we appreciate, you know, all the support. We Mm -hmm. hope you found this, um, you know, valuable information. Again, just because your vehicle is on this list or potential vehicles on this list doesn't mean it is the an unreliable vehicle. But as always, we will cruise on by and pick, pick you up next week. Thanks. This has been a WK Burnouts production.